Dude, millions of Dell PCs are at risk of RCEs. Disconnect your Western Digital MyBook and rip John McAfee. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 29th, 2021. This is your weekly summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. FYI, Hack5 fans, the team is releasing a brand new Bash Bunny in the Hack5 shop, and my patrons automatically get a discount as a perk. So check it out, support the brand, so that we can keep on making free content like this video. We have a bunch of vulnerabilities to go ahead and get into, so onto the news. Four major security vulnerabilities have been found in Dell's BIOS Connect feature of Support Assist. So Support Assist comes pre-installed on Dell devices that run Windows operating systems. And BIOS Connect is a remote firmware update and operating system recovery feature. Now this problem affects 129 different models of Dell consumer and business laptops, desktops, and tablets, leaving around 30 million different devices exposed. Security researchers at Eclipsium found the series of vulnerabilities that could allow an attacker to remotely execute code within the BIOS using these features. The flaws are listed with an 8.3 out of 10 severity, and they are tracked as CVE 2021 21571, 21572, 21573, and you guessed it, 21574. These include an insecure TLS connection from the BIOS to Dell and three overflow vulnerabilities. The researchers stated that these can lead to privileged remote attacks that can impersonate the Dell.com servers and take control of the boot process, subverting operating system and higher layer security controls. Two of these affect the operating system recovery process, and the other overflow flaw affects the firmware update process. Now, even though they are similar, they all could work independently from one another and lead to remote code execution attacks. The attack scenario starts with the host device with BIOS Connect making a request to Dell, which is intercepted by the attacker. The attacker sends back an acknowledgement to the host device, and the host device accepts the attacker's certificate. The attacker can then send multiple independent overflows at the device as they want. Now, both Eclipsium and Dell have provided reports and advisories on remediation attempts for the issues, including using alternatives to support assist for updating your BIOS if needed. Users will need to update their BIOS or UFI firmware though, and Dell has an update available for impacted systems over on Dell.com. Two of the tracked vulnerabilities were fixed on the server side, while the other two require a client update. Now, if you can't update immediately, you can just totally disable BIOS Connect altogether. A wise hacker once said on Twitter, if it's connected to the internet, then it's not a backup. If you own a Western Digital MyBook Live, disconnect it from the internet right now. Like pause this video, go disconnect your Western Digital MyBook Live, and then come back and watch the rest of this video. These devices are being remotely factory reset and files are being completely wiped from these attached storage devices. The Western Digital MyBook Live is a physical device that can just chill on a desk since it's so small, but it can be used as a network attached storage device so you can access files or manage them remotely via its ethernet connection. This works as well if they are behind a secure network, so consumers love them for their ease of use. A few days ago, users found that they could not access their WD MyBook Lives anymore. The web dashboard for the device would say, quote, invalid password, and all of the files and the data were gone. According to Bleeping Computer, one owner stated it worked fine for years, but their two terabytes of data were all gone, showing nothing but the empty directories. Owners found that the device had received a remote comment to factory reset. This is called MyBook Live factory reset.sh. It was a script, and the script began on June 23rd, continuing through the night. In response, Western Digital posted an advisory stating these devices are being compromised through exploitation of a remote command execution vulnerability, which triggers the factory reset to erase all of the data. 
Since these devices have not received any updates since 2015, this seems likely. It doesn't seem financially motivated though, since nobody has received any kind of ransomware threat. WD stated logs show the devices were connected from an IP address in all sorts of different countries and all sorts of different IPs, and they suspect the devices were directly connected through port forwarding or direct connections, including UPnP. They also noticed a Trojan file was installed on some of these. Now, WD did not find evidence of their own servers or services being compromised. A remote code execution vulnerability does exist for these devices, and that's listed and tracked as CVE 2018-18472. Now, this was discovered after that 2015 software and firmware update, so it's possible an attacker scanned for open ports, found these devices, and decided to factory reset them and just have some fun. So do what Western Digital says and disconnect these devices immediately while the investigation is underway. While some users have reported successful recoveries using file recovery software, that's not always the case. So continue using these over a network connection completely at your own risk. So who's to blame for this data loss? Western Digital, who likely had an unpatched RCE vulnerability, or the users, who may have been connecting straight to the internet webs from these devices. I mean, the devices were end of life, but they do still work, so receiving updates after that time would not be expected necessarily. Many of these users lost years and years of data. Now, I personally back up threefold to a cloud option, to a local network attached storage device, and to an air gapped backup drive stored in a safe. Now, that may be overkill, but it does offer peace of mind in the event that something does happen. Real quick, I want to give a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support as usual. And a quick shout out to Neil this week for joining the Threatwire Alliance and as always for supporting the show. Check out the Patreon Alliance for information on that new Hack5 Shop coupon code so you can get your discount as a Patreon supporter and your exclusive access to the audio only podcast version of the show as well. And now on to the third news story, Trigger warning for suicide before I get into this one. Now, in what was first reported by Spanish outlet called El Pai, I think that's how you say it, the antivirus creator John McAfee, 75, has died in an apparent suicide while he was in jail. Everyone has heard of the McAfee antivirus, and the man behind that company is John McAfee, who created McAfee Associates in 1987 to later be acquired by Dell in 2010. Now, McAfee left that business in 1994, and he was an entrepreneur for a lot of security security firms like Quorum X and Tribal Voice. He also held leadership positions in many other security companies as well. Now, because of him selling off his stake at McAfee Antivirus in the 90s, he gained a lot of wealth and he was hugely popular. Like the dude had a posse and he was a cult figure for many. He later advocated for users to uninstall McAfee AV, calling it bloatware, along with other words that I really can't repeat here on YouTube, to be honest. <laughs> but his history was troubling. He was known for recreational drug use and living a, well, to put it lightly, a very interesting life, much of which I don't feel comfortable detailing here as it may run afoul to YouTube's rules. <sighs> He lived in Belize. He went to the US in 2013, but he was at one point wanted for questioning due to suspicion of murder back in Belize. He was also arrested in Spain in October of 2020 over tax evasion charges, and he was most recently in prison in Spain when the news hit last week. So he was found dead on June 23rd from an apparent suicide by hanging while in prison near Barcelona. I mention apparent because of the circumstances surrounding his death. What makes this important is twofold. First, many information security moguls do end up parting this world due to mental health issues or due to factors that they can't fully control. And oftentimes this comes as a huge hit to the industry. In McAfee's case though, this news went public just hours after the Spanish courts approved an extradition request from the USA 
for him to face tax evasion charges. So this timing is odd, given many times John McAfee has publicly stated that he believed the US government wanted to just get rid of him, to whack him. So it comes as no surprise that many individuals think of this death as very suspicious. Even though John's early work in security was very huge for home users, it was marred by controversy in the 2000s. But even with that, my thoughts are with his family and friends. If you or somebody that you know is in crisis, please visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org for more information. So moving on from that, this week on Morse Code, I am moving my entire studio, including what you see behind me, into a new space. So this set might look a little bit different. It might sound different next week. So just bear with me, assuming that I can get everything up and running and I'm recording next week, we shall see. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that change. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for more of that. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel as well. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.